MESA, the Middle East South Asian Studies Program, is a very important academic program at UC Davis. It's something that uh, grew out of an interaction of students and faculty and community leaders and, and friends uh, in the College of Letters and Sciences. It's been very successful. It's had a rapid rise and it's moving forward very quickly. So the Middle East and South Asia Studies program is this really unique interdisciplinary um, uh, major and minor on campus and it provides students with a new way of looking at the world. The students started uh, asking to build this program in the 1990s. The students had been working since 1998 on their own to try to de develop a program which they conceived of at that time as a Middle East Studies program. They did this through resolutions through the ASUCD, the Associated Students of the University of California, Davis. They eventually learned where I was, contacted me in my last year at, in Cairo, and asked me if I would help them build, uh, build this program. When I returned in the fall of 2001, I contacted the students, and it was actually three students who worked with me to uh, develop a database of what had been done at UC Davis toward building uh, a, a program in Middle East Studies. They did the background uh, research, identifying all the conferences that we had done, all the lectures that we had organized, and what courses were available, and identifying every faculty member who might have an interest in Middle East Studies. The research cluster it was a very important period in the formation of this program. We happened to hire uh, three faculty, three new faculty, all of whom were scholars of the Middle East. One was Omnil Shakri in history. The second was Baki Tajan, who has a joint appointment in history and religious studies. And the third person was Jocelyn Charlotte in comparative literature. So now we were four who did Middle East uh, studies. Uh, it was actually the idea of Omni al Shakri that we do Middle East South Asia studies. Uh, this kind of cross regional um, uh, initiative and academic enterprise is, is generally um, relatively rare. Uh. What we did next to develop this program was at that time, we, as I said, we had just hired three new faculty, so now we were four of us who did the Middle East. And with this new notion that we would be organizing on the basis of Middle East South Asia studies, we invited the scholars who were here who had any interest in South Asia uh, to join with us. We did this through what we call the Middle East South Asia Research Cluster. That research cluster in the first year had no funding. We met once a month at my house over Lebanese uh, uh, mazza appetizers to read each other's work and to discuss the idea of forming a program. We got the MESA, the MESA minor approved in 2004 because the students worked with us and pushed and drove and, and did, the, did the legwork. We were very fortunate. The university response to the idea of forming a Middle East South Asia Studies program was across the board supportive and sympathetic. We had a dean in Steve Sheffern who immediately saw the opportunity of creating a program that had uh, contemporary relevance, that had an urgency to it, and that, that clearly had a constituency. So he supported us. We submitted the proposal for the minor in Middle East South Asia Studies in January of 2004. By spring of 2004, we had a program that is probably the fastest any program has been approved. There are very few programs in Middle East South Asia Studies around the country. That no sooner had we gotten the, the minor approved in 2004, we began pro the proposal for the major. Again, it was the students who, who helped us write the proposal for the major. And right away, we thought, well, you can't have a program like this without having the languages. So we uh, decided it would be a good idea to apply to the Department of Education for a grant to develop uh, the languages, Arabic and Hindi, Urdu. But only one proposal could go forward from the campus. 870 stu 874 students circulated and signed a petition that they wanted the, the MESA program to be the one to go forward with this grant, and they wanted Arabic and Hindi, Urdu. And as a result of that, our program won the right to submit the proposal for this program. We were the first program in the university to apply for this Department of Education grant, and we won. 
We had a number of outstanding events that mobilized a lot of support for the Middle East South Asia Studies program. One of them was bringing Shirin Ibadi to the campus. That was a fortuitous event. The community came to us with the idea that they wanted to bring her to UC Davis. And our um, success in this program was that we worked directly with the community and with the administration. We were able to work with the community to raise donor funds from the community to pay for her uh, travel and uh, accommodations and the, uh, the catering that we did. And money was left over. And the money that was left over, the community said they want that, that funding to go to the Middle East South Asia Studies program. It was our first experience in donor development, was the Shireen Ibadi event. We are tremendously indebted to Jocelyn Charlotte for developing the Arabic language program. Fortunately, our deans did sign off on our proposal for a grant from the federal government to start Arabic and Hindi Urdu, and so the deans were behind us. Um, in getting those programs off the ground. We initially started out with you know, one section, one first year section in each language program, and it was obvious that we needed two or more. So we were eventually able to fund a full lecture position and have two sections of first year, but um, we still need more. And so as of next year, we'll have um, a graduate student who's qualified to teach Arabic. We'll also teach a third section of first year and hopefully we'll um, arrive at a similar solution in the future for Hindi Urdu. It entails a whole lot more commitment on the part of the administration to establish a major than it does to establish a minor. Initially, the proposal for the major was rejected. The students were quite upset when they learned that the major had, uh, had been rejected. They organized a petition. 300 students signed a petition within a matter of a month asking the Undergraduate Council to support the and approve the uh, proposal for the major. Once we learned and worked with the, uh, the chairs of the Undergraduate Council to understand what it, their concerns were, we provided them with more information, cleared up some of the misunderstandings they had about the proposal. It took about six months, but within six months we were able to reverse the decision so that by the fall of 2008, actually, the proposal was approved and we had, uh, the fall, by 2007 actually, the proposal was approved. By the fall, fall of 2008, the, the major was actually available to students and we were able to act, graduate our first students by, the, by June of 2009. There's only a handful of universities in the country that have a Middle East South Asian Studies program with a minor and major. Really, this program is, uh, in, in our minds, the leading program at this point. We've made tremendous progress. The Iranian Studies uh, lecture series uh, was a wonderful and humbling event. It was started because three families in Sacramento donated funds to uh, have a lecture series in Iranian Studies, which they graciously and kindly named after me. So 2009-10 was our first lecture series in Iranian Studies. We're now finishing our third year in the Iranian Studies um, lecture series. We will have funding at least for another year, perhaps more. We've gotten great response so far. Uh, we've had you know, prominent scholars from all over the place uh, coming to UC Davis in the last two years. Uh, so um, overall, I think Mesa has already and begun to uh, make its mark on campus. It is a, becoming a very popular major and a minor, um, and we are branching out into new additional minors within the rubric of Middle East South Asia Studies. An emphasis, a minor with an emphasis on Iranian studies has been proposed, a minor with an emphasis on Arab studies has been proposed, and perhaps a minor with an emphasis on Indian studies is going, is going to be there soon. We've just succeeded in raising funds from a donor in Dubai, a Palestinian donor in Dubai by the name of Faris Saeed, and he is funding the Faris Saeed program in Arab Studies, which will include at least two lectures a year. His funding will also support the development of new courses so that we can develop a minor, undergraduate minor in Arab Studies. Um, I think that the Arab Studies and Iranian Studies majors, uh, minors rather, um, will be a big boost for those language programs and those minors will work together well with the language program so that students can um, 
focus on language or they can focus on culture and society or they can do a little bit of both and they have different options. We have built a program from bottom up. It is basically driven by student demands and student interest. Now we have a major in, in MESA. MESA would not be MESA without the students. The students were utterly crucial to the, the very forming of the idea of, of MESA and they were utterly crucial to every step in its establishment and its approval. It was a student who wrote the proposal for the minor. Zena Zatari wrote the initial draft and then Smithy Sinavas revised and then I finalized. But we had a student writing the first draft of the minor. When we were ready to write the major, again, we had students providing us with the background information that we needed in order to, to develop the proposal for the major. They wrote the petition, 18, 874 students wrote the petition asking for Arabic and Hindi Urdu. 300 students wrote the petition asking for the major to be approved. They passed something like 46 resolutions through ASUCD asking uh, the university to, uh, to uh, develop a program like this. Uh, and every step of the way where we had a bump in the road, the students were there to organize, to, to lobby, to petition so that we could move forward. It was grassroots from bottom up, students kind of signing petitions or demanding things or asking for things. And, um, you know, once the students actually want it, then they can move uh, the faculty, they can move the administration, they can move bureaucracies, they can move anything. Because student power is a lot larger, I think, that people perhaps realize. The community was very generous and supportive and also helped us for more fundraising activities um, outside of California. We went to the community, uh, first to the Iranian community, then to the, the Arab-speaking community, and now to the Indian community, um, out of the South Asian community, and, and people stepped forward. We went to um, donors who were interested in building Arabic studies, and we have money from uh, a, a donor, Ferris Said out of which we are building Arab studies uh, and now we are going to donors, potential donors in Indian studies and, um, and building Indian studies on campus. We could not have established this program without the collaborative spirits of this community at UC Davis. I think this is what distinguishes Davis, is that we work together so well. that It wasn't just a group of faculty who wanted to have a program for themselves. It was the students, it was the administration, it was the Office of Research, it was the Office of International Programs, it was the College of Agriculture, it was the School of Law, it was the College of Engineering. And we had support across the whole campus to go forward to build this program and in addition we had the support of the community. The community put up significant amount of matching funds for that very first uh, Department of Education application that, that we submitted had we not had the community uh, donor funds for matching, we might not have been so easily easy to leverage the, uh, getting matching funds from the campus. It's one of the most important, I think, uh, or organizations of all the UCs here. I myself teach at UC Riverside, and I wish we had something like this. And, and I think that, you know, not just for the students and for the faculty and the staff at UC Davis, but for the larger community uh, in Davis and even in Northern California, we really need to support uh, these kinds of centers. We know that this development was collaborative at every step of the way and such a group effort is really important for it to continue to go forward. The community support is so very important and the interests of the students and faculty and other members of the UC Davis community are, are something that uh, many of our programs seek to emulate. We started out with two faculty. It was Barbara Metzkaff who taught South Asia and myself who taught uh, the Middle East courses and we were the only two who taught courses regularly on the Middle East or South Asia in 2001. We now have over 20 faculty who, that, who teach Middle East South Asia courses, in addition to an additional 30 faculty who are affiliated with the program and who teach occasional courses and are, come to our events and are, are working with us to develop programming. In 2001, we had only about five or six courses on the Middle East or South Asia. We now have over 80, somewhere around 85 courses on the Middle East or South Asia. In 2001, we had only one language that was taught. It was Hebrew, and it was at the first year level. We now have three languages that we teach, 
Hebrew, Arabic, and Hindi. Urdu and Arabic is now taught at the third year level, and Hindi Urdu taught at the second year level. So uh, the, the the first year that we taught, that we had a minor in Middle East South Asia studies, we immediately had over a thousand students taking the courses. Quite quite an amazing response. Within five years, we had doubled that. Two thousand students were taking courses in the Middle East South Asia studies program by 2009. And the faculty is always helpful and there's just so many more courses that are being offered in each genre and the cool thing about the Mesa department or the Mesa studies program is that it pulls from each major like anthropology, women's studies, uh, history, political science. So you're not always stuck in the same kind of umbrella. You're, you've got like these different spaces that you can go into. You can take a religious studies class and learn about Islam or, or Hinduism. You can take a language course and learn Arabic or Hebrew or Hindi or the um, it's really it's really diverse our goal is to uh, raise enough money to have uh, another professor in the social sciences and the point is uh, for the the ultimate goal of um, bring in Persian language instruction to UC Davis I'm very excited about the prospects of the future we want to build further, we want to strengthen the graduate component of the program. Um, we will make it, want to make it meaningful for some of our graduate students in terms of the way they, the courses are distributed, the way they, they can make can complement their disciplinary uh, focus. Um, on the other hand, there are also graduate students in cultural studies and other disciplines where there is already an inter interdisciplinary component for them a focus uh, coming and support coming from Middle East South Asia studies would give their uh, graduate careers and their future uh, careers as teachers and educators uh, a new kind of dimension. Um, so I'm very excited about that as well. I think more students are inspired to do a, pursue a, honors in Mesa than they are to pursue an honors in like a different major. I'm very proud of this uh, program and lecture series 